Hi, I'm Rob Meyer. I'm a member of the R2D2 Builders Club. The R2D2 Builders Club is an online community with members worldwide who share a common interest in building life-size reproductions of the droids from the Star Wars films and extended universe for fun and entertainment, but never for profit. Uh, one project I've been involved with over the past several years has been in converting the electronics from the popular Hasbro interactive voice controlled R2-D2 into our full-size replicas. And uh, we were able to put a system together that worked pretty well, but uh, there were a lot of drawbacks to that approach uh, that, that kind of uh, made it a limiting factor for a lot of people. Uh, the main one being that you had to take apart the Hasbro toy and gut all of the electronics out of it to use in our system. And uh, the other being that sometimes uh, the electronics would, would fail, uh, for the electronics that we had harvested would eventually fail and, and we really had no way of diagnosing what the problem was or how to repair it, uh, which was very frustrating. So I set about to build our own version of the Hasbro system uh, using our own components and everything, something we could work with and then better uh, tailor to our own uses and I finally had some success in the, in the hardest part of that process, which was the voice control, the interactive uh, voice system itself. And so what I have here is my uh, test setup that I, that I put together this week. Um, this is the, let's see if I can get this closer to the camera here for you. The green board here is the is a easy VR uh, voice recognition module. I'm sorry, excuse me, this is a smart VR voice recognition module uh, from VR.eu, a company that in Europe that produces these. And it's uh, currently attached to the uh, smart VR development board uh, for, for those purposes. But the module itself is this chip you see in the middle here, this kind of large uh, dual inline pin package. And then right now I have a simple uh, UART serial connection going from that onto a uh, SparkFun MP3 trigger, uh, which is exactly the same as what many club members use for our sound effects. And one of the goals of this project was to be able to incorporate um, all the sound effects uh, from the re voice responses uh, into the same VR, uh, into the same uh, uh, MP3 trigger that we're using for our other uh, system. And so I was able to do that here. And what this allows us to do is to have um, all of our voice response commands uh, programmed into the upper registers of the MP3 trigger. And we still leave the lower ones available for our own systems if you're running a JEDI system or, or whatever other board you might have. Or if, you've, uh, if you're actually using the physical triggers here, those are still available. So this gets away from the issue we had with the old boards where we had to have a a separate sound interface and some way to switch between the sound effects from the voice control system and our own remote controls, whatever we might have. Uh, this now allows both systems to work at the same time. If you had, say, a Jedi system or another symbol system that, that does use the serial port on the MP3 trigger, uh, you can simply uh, network the two serial uh, uh, cables together. There's different techniques you can do this, but basically uh, you would be able to configure it where it, it could get a uh, serial signal from, from more than one source at the same time, still function perfectly seamlessly. And so this was all developed um, uh, when I bought the development kit for the Smart VR module. It comes with an integrated uh, development environment, which I have installed on this computer here, uh, and actually quite a large tool of software that it takes to develop a speaker-independent voice recognition system. And that was the biggest challenge, is that I wanted this to be, uh, to operate similarly to the toy and that anyone should be able to come up to it and issue commands without having to train it for their voice. And, and that's where speaker independent voice recognition comes in. And it takes a little more work, takes a little more processing power from the chip. And uh, but I was able to do that with the tools they, they uh, provided. It took quite a long time. I'm not a C programmer. So having to work my way through that took quite a bit of uh, a pretty steep learning curve for me. But um, the C uh, 
the, uh, the C file is back here, and this is where I have the logic for all the voice commands set up, and the, the tree, the hierarchy of different uh, commands and responses is set up there. And then that little window I had up front, uh, this is called the, the uh, Quick uh, Text to Speaker Independent uh, software, and this is the development platform where you actually program the phonetic uh, uh, acoustic model and grammar models uh, that the chip actually uses to process uh, the sounds it hears and determine whether or not it's actually hearing a phrase. And it, this is pretty nice. You type in a, a text word, like do you remember, you know, you type in a phrase and it converts that into the, uh, the appropriate phonetic alphabet symbols. I, I know you can't see it on this camera, but um, it gives you the chart of the uh, phonetic alphabet and shows you what those symbols are and it's, it works, it really streamlines the, pro the development process. Um, what, uh, what I had a challenge with was the menu for the uh, do, you, do You Remember game where you say Do You Remember and then a character's voice from Star Wars and, it, and R2D2 gives you a, a different response depending on what, you know, what the name is. Well most of those names are, are very uncommon <laughs> as far as those things go and, and they're not the kind of things that the text to speaker independent system was able to intuitively interpret so I had to go in and they do have a provision here where you can go in manually and code in the phonetic sounds uh, for each individual syllable of those names which I had to do with most of them and then it allows you to test them on a computer-based uh, uh, simulator where, where it uses the computer's microphone and everything and, and you can test the commands and the responses and fine-tune them and, until they're to your liking. So we were able to do that. And uh, finally, um, there's the option for our, our European members or folks who otherwise uh, might have the need. Uh, I could just as easily recreate all these commands using a, a UK-based English model which uh, slightly different. I have heard feedback in the past that's, uh, that some of our UK members uh, have sometimes had a little difficulty getting the interactive R2-D2 to respond to them. Well, we, um, the quick uh, T2SI uh, software does have the, the capability of doing UK English. It could actually do you know, half a dozen other languages, but um, I'm not versant enough in any of them to be able to develop system on that. So anyway, let me get on to the, to the demonstration. First, I'll turn on the uh, my little um, uh, amplified MP3 trigger here I've built, and then I'll turn on the system itself. This is the this is pretty much it right now. I just have the uh, the Smart VR module with a UART interface onto our MP3 trigger for this demonstration. No Hasbro components at all at this point. So AR2 light beam. The commands you would expect to hear. I've ported all of the Hasbro type sounds from our own MP3 pot files, um, converted them on Audacity uh, into something you know tailored to how we want on our system. But it's pretty much similar uh, to what you would expect. Um, the command tree is somewhat different right now. I don't know if I'll change it. Uh, for instance, when you go to command mode on this system, you go to command mode and give it a command and it does the mode but then it automatically goes back to the main menu. It doesn't stay in command mode. So every time you want to enter a command that's from the command mode menu you have to say command mode. For me I think that's fine. I don't, I don't know if I'll change that. Um, there's no separate game mode anymore because we've removed a lot of the games that are motion based. Everything about this system is all about the lights and sounds and the dome rotation. There's no mobility stuff that, that you would have in the original toy. So other than that, all the other things are the same. You know, hey R2. Hey R2. Room guard. That's the sound he makes when he goes into room guard. I kind of changed that. And then there's the familiar game. Hey R2. Hey R2. We're getting back to it. AR2. Do you remember Princess Leia? So that's a good one, and, and then you, uh, this is uh, a favorite for a lot of people. AR2. Do you remember Darth Vader?
and then I took the opportunity of, of adding some things from the films. I tried to keep everything kind of in a reference to what we saw in the films, so I, I added one to the uh, Do You Remember program. Hey, R2, do you remember the Jawas? And then I should also mention that, you know, right now all these voice commands are, are just uh, uh, triggering the MP3 trigger, but the idea is that there will, there's also a uh, serial uh, two-byte message that goes out with every response to the main control board. So, you know, the lights, the, the other functions, the, dro the dome rotation, all of that will also be controlled in response to this board. Um, and the idea is I'm going to build it similar to an Arduino shield. It's actually going to use an Arduino Pro Micro as the processor, and that will plug into my existing uh, interactive conversion boards that I have built because they already have all the power supplies and drivers and lots of neat options that this will be able to plug right into basically in place of the PIC microcontroller that I currently have on those conversion boards. That will come out and there will be a header there. We'll be able to bolt the two boards on top of each other and that will plug right in and make all the connections for the drivers from this system. So um, some other neat things I've added. I really tried to customize this to, uh, to those of us who are into the gadgets on our RTD2. And so uh, the command mode menu is geared mostly around activating gadgets by voice control. So let's say you have a life form scanner and we know that uh, from the films you know when we saw the life form scanner the first time was when uh, when Luke was lost uh, I think that was the first time but when he was lost on the planet Hoth so um, let's say you have a life form scanner in installed on your dome and you want to activate it by voice control you can say hey R2 command mode where's Luke makes a little life form scanner sounds and then it, so that could trigger your, your uh, life form scanner to come up I give a th few seconds delay there for the thing to activate if you know if you have it hooked up for that and then similarly the periscope if you remember the scene on Dagobah where R2 falls in the water and, and Luke's trying Luke's trying to find him and the periscope pops up so we all remember that line hey R2 Command mode. Where are you? I don't know if you can hear that, but he's making the little dum de dum sound that he makes when he's going through the water with his periscope. So, and then finally, one more gadget. Uh, well, there's a couple more. Uh, let's say you have a computer interface arm. And you know how they always say, "Hey, R2, plug in and you know tell us, you know." where the princess is and things like that so hey R2 command mode plug in and it gives you a little processing sound there so um, like I said we've added a lot of things to it and uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg I've, I've been working on this for quite some time and, and about a hundred hurdles I had to overcome to get to this point, but I'm pretty happy. The nuts and bolts of the interfacing to the to the electronics and the droid are, are going to be pretty straightforward from here. I won't say straightforward, but it's nothing I haven't done with the other systems, so I'm just happy to get the voice control part of it down. Uh, one more thing I wanted to show is I, I added another little, little file in here. Uh, Trooper Trent made some really awesome uh, R2-D2 customized uh, waves that I got a kick out of and I had to add one of those to the main menu so hey R2 play disco <laughs> and again I don't know if you can hear that uh, I might increase the volume on that file a little bit the beauty of this is you can go in and customize the mp3 files all you want because it's just the same mp3 trigger that most of us use for our sound effects.
So that's the beginnings of our new uh, interactive voice control system, custom built for the R2 builders. Thanks.